Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen of my 1P class. Uh, we're going to talk about lines of best fit today. Our goal, I can recognize when a line of best fit is appropriate for data. I can fit it to the data, and I can use the line to make predictions. And that's where um, lines of best fits come in handy, and that's where coming up with data comes in handy. You want to make predictions about future things that are going to happen. You become a psychic of sorts, a mathematic psychic. Uh, anyway, we're talking about lines of best fits. So once you see a pattern or trend in your scatter plot, you can create a line or curve of best fit to model your data. Now, you created a scatter plot yesterday and hopefully you saw a pattern in that data. Um, the pattern you should have seen in that data was that as the person's foot gets bigger they're actually a taller person. So the bigger the foot the taller the person. Well you can actually draw a line on there and perhaps make predictions about how big the foot of a person will or how tall a person will be that has a certain type foot and that's where the um, the power of the model comes in handy. So um, notice I have in big bold blue letters here if there is no pattern or trend to your data a model should not be created. Don't put a line on data if there isn't a line to be put there. So here line or curve of best fit. A line or curve of best fit is used to show the general trend in a scatter plot. Oops this is going to move all by itself. Ooh, where's it going? Okay. It can help you make predictions, uh, and there are many different types. Okay, I didn't mean to move that. Okay, anyway, this is moving awfully slow. Um, so, right here we have linear models and we have curves of best fit. A linear model looks like a line, it looks like you can put a line through it, or at least if it's it might be more scattered than this like your information was yesterday but it's basically got a got a slope on it whereas when you have a curve of best fit it definitely looks like a curve there's a definite trend that goes in one direction and then in another direction so we're going to look at how to create a line of best fit by hand and I'm going to do it on the the next few graphs and hopefully you can do it uh, repeat it on your graphs in your note um, the line must follow the general trend or direction of the points. It may actually pass through very few or even no actual data points. I shouldn't say actually, it should say actual. Um, and this isn't going to let me change it. So stroke out the LY on there. No actual data points. And there should be an even split of data, data points above and below the line. So if we're looking at this line of best fit here, it's generally along the same slope as the data points. Uh, it's gone through a few data points, um, but there are about the same number of data points above the line as there are below. It's not quite. We've got two data points above and three below, but it's a generally an even split. So this is a pretty good line of best fit. So we're going to have a look at the other uh, graphs on here and does it look like we should put a line of best fit on here it actually looks like it might be a little bit of a curve it looks like as we go down it starts to taper off here so it might be a curve of best fit or we can fit a line to it that looks pretty much like it so we're going to talk about fitting a line of best fit here uh, so I'm going to take this line and I'm going to try to fit it to the data now some people will do this and say well I split the data in half um, I've got this number of points above, well I've got four above and three below, well if I, if I move it up here I've got four above and four below, so, um, so is that a good line of best fit? Well, no because it doesn't follow the general trend of the data, it's not along the same slope. So you've got to adjust it um, and move it around so that it's about the same slope as the data there. Now, some people would say, okay, this is on the same slope as my data. And I would say, yes, it is, but it's all above your data. Remember, we want it to be kind of above, kind of below. So we're going to move that in here and say, okay, it's gone through a few data points. We've got two below and we've got two above, and it's basically on the same slope. So that is a decent line of best fit. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. This is generally linear 
it's definitely not showing a curve. It's generally linear. There's a little bit more stuff going on in here than there is down here or up here, but it's just generally a line and it's a little bit more scattered so this is a weaker relationship than this one here but we've also got more dots so that makes it a little bit more accurate so I'm gonna take this and try to fit it to the data and once again I might do that and say does this follow the trend and you should say to me no mrs. Caldwell that does not follow the trend it is nowhere near on the same slope as the rest of the data and it and I will say okay uh, how about this? Does that follow the trend of the data? And you would say, well, yeah, it's a little bit better, Mrs. Caldwell, but um, it's not going through the middle of the data. It's not getting uh, some of the data set on one side as on the other. So I would pull it down and say, well, how about that? You'd say, oh, Mrs. Caldwell, that is so much better. So generally we have about the same number of dots above as we have below and it's following the basic slope of the graph and so that would be a decent line of best fit. Now I could use this and say um, and let's have a look at this arm span versus height of 26 students I could say what is the arm span of someone who is 150 centimeters tall then I would go to 150 centimeters and I go up and it's like there's no data points for 150 centimeters it's like well no nobody in the class was 150 centimeters tall um, but if I go up here and then go across it looks like we could predict that there may be 148 centimeters tall if I do that okay so we can make a prediction even though no one in the class actually fit that particular data point Okay, now we have one more student earnings. This one there's not a whole lot of information for. It looks roughly linear and this is earnings versus time worked. Um, so we're going to just put a line of best fit on this data. Remember I've got to get it roughly the same overall uh, slope of the graph and I got to put it through the center of the data points and so something like that is more in order. Now here's a little question to ponder. Will everyone draw exactly the same line of best fit? Uh, no. No, some people might have it off just a tiny bit. Okay, that line of best fit is not the same as this line of best fit. Some people may decide that the steepness of the graph is not quite the same as others. Now, who do we decide is right? Well, we don't really. This is a model, and it's a model that's done sort of roughly. So no one is actually right, and no one is actually wrong, as long as it is generally following the data trends with some above and some below the line. Now, here is, and I'm just going to zoom this to my entire page. Okay, here is the uh, graph that you guys worked on yesterday height versus foot length and so we want to fit a line of best fit on this data so I'm gonna take this and that I hope you agree does not generally follow the trend of the data so we're gonna have to adjust the slope of it a little bit and we'll go through just kinda like that now we've got quite a lot above and quite a lot below so we'll maybe need to move it over a little bit so that we got a little bit more going on on either side and that actually looks like a pretty good line of best fit now notice it doesn't go through very many points it goes through a couple okay uh, but it's not hitting a lot of them it almost hits this one comes close to this one uh, but it generally follows the same slope okay now there are a few questions here that I want you to think about and this is part of your homework too and I'll be coming around so we can talk to it about it I want you to describe the trend line from the graph yesterday so here's the trend line now some of the words you could use to um, to describe the trend line are uh, it slopes up okay it goes up as we move from left to right um, is it steep is it not so steep is it shallow uh, that kind of thing so you want to talk about that kind of thing um, use your line of best fit to estimate how tall you would expect someone to be if their foot measured 30 centimeters so I want you to try and figure out from here 30 centimeters and try to use your line of best fit and notice I don't go that far if I 
if I follow my 30 centimeter line up, 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 it's not hitting the line of best fit, so I may need to extend that up there to be able to actually answer that question. How big would you expect the foot of someone who was 166 centimeters tall? Then I give you a little bit of information on myself there. And then this says use the attached sheet of graph paper to make a scatter plot for height versus arm length. Now you have that data. I gave you that data yesterday when you were plotting this stuff. Now I want you to do it again. So on the next page, you have this graph that you can, oops, it looks like the this axis has disappeared. Uh, anyway, you can put your labels on it. You can label the grid. Now remember, you have to have a nice even spacing along here that lets you get all of the numbers in. And then what else are you going to do? Well, then you're going to make three questions up, similar to what I did where I said, how tall would someone be if they had a foot length of 23 centimeters or something along those lines. You're going to make up three questions. Okay and then you're going to do these practice questions. And so we've talked a lot about line of best fit. You got a fair bit of work to do. Um, so that, I'm going to let you get to it. This is the end of me talking at you.